everyone. <laughs> Welcome to my booktube. 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 This is my first video ever. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this. And um, yeah, I was going to do <laughs> the get to know the bookstagrammer tag, but then I was like, ooh, my replies are really boring to all of these questions, so I will just do the most generic video that there is, you know? A wrap up. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, all jokes aside, I actually really enjoy wrap ups. I think they're so fun to watch because you get to see people's opinions and like their honest opinions on everything they've read throughout the month and it's always like an interesting jumble of books, I feel like, so, you know. I thought I'll just start my booktube channel with one of my favorite videos that I genuinely like watching. So yeah, here I am. And let's get into the video. So um, the first things first, I think I should introduce myself. I'm Lily, I'm 21 years old and I am a history, politics and philosophy undergrad student. I'm actually graduating in three months, existential dread. <laughs> But um, yeah, I'm really passionate about books, traveling, sunsets, tea, feminism, politics, philosophy, history, you know, all the jazz. And I just wanted to create content in a different form because I'm already on Bookstagram, but I just wanted to kind of like explore video making. So here I am. Who knows how long I'll be here? Maybe I'm here for a good time, not a long time. Maybe I'll be here for a long time. Who knows? I don't. But yeah, anyways, <laughs> let's get into the actual video. So the first book that I read this month and started off this year with was an Agatha Christie book, The Body in the Library. First of all, if you don't follow my bookstagram, I am obsessed with Agatha Christie. She is the queen of crime. <laughs> Honestly, I love her so much. Her books just are the ultimate comfort reads for me. Like they feel like a warm hug and a cup of tea and some soup and bread. Like, I don't know, they're just my ultimate comfort read. Like, cozy crimes, you know? This one centers around Miss Marple, who is Agatha Christie's female detective. She is amazing. She's like an old lady that's just really, really clever and people constantly underestimate her because she is a woman and she's old. And she just like shows them in every single one. And I'm like, yes, Miss Marple, you show them. And um, yeah, so this one centers around this girl's body that's found in a library. What? <laughs> yeah, and um, just how Miss Marple is solving the mystery, basically. I think this one's definitely not my favorite. It's a little bit slow in the middle and Miss Marple isn't that much in it, which I wanted more of her. I would definitely still recommend this and I think it was fun. More of like a mediocre read for me, but like a cozy way to start the year. The next book I read was uh, The Wrath and the Dawn by Rene Adier. Uh, first of all, how beautiful is this book? And like, it has these beautiful illustrations inside as well. Absolutely love it. I actually read this for the first time in 2016. Loved it completely forgot every single thing about this book and then in the beginning of the year I was like oh I kind of want to finish stuff and especially series that I've started and I was like oh this one's a duology and I never read the second one and I have it so I should just reread the first one so that's what I did <laughs> and um this book is a 1001 nights retelling it has an enemies to lovers romance at its center which you know, it's my favourite trope, so I enjoyed that aspect quite a lot. Even though the romance moved a little bit too quickly for my taste, but I didn't mind too much. And I really loved the writing, the atmosphere was amazing, and the plot was really interesting as well. So, a solid YA fantasy read, I think. The next book I read was um, The Strange and Beautiful Sorrows of Ava Lavender by Leslie Walton. And... <laughs> I've had this book on my shelves for seven years now, I think. It's been a while. It's definitely been a while. And I was like, it is time for me to finally read this book. And I did, and I loved it. So great experience, you know? So this book is kind of about the 
La Rue family. It focuses on three of the women and um, their lives and how they evolve and unfold. And it's magical realism, so there's a lot of absurd and strange things happening throughout this book. It's just told so beautifully and the writing style is amazing and everything that happens just is, I don't know, it all just makes sense and it's very beautifully done. And the main character who tells the story and is the narrator is Ava Lavender and she was born with wings and Ava is just such a like whimsical, uh, beautiful character and just a whole story it reads like a fairy tale basically. Like it is all very whimsical and um, the storytelling aspect is really strong in this one and I just really enjoyed it. And it's a really short one, but it's really impactful. It had me in tears at the end and by the way, this definitely needs a trigger warning for rape and sexual violence and it is very graphic so keep that in mind before picking this one up but yeah I honestly really enjoyed this and the hype like six years ago on booktube was definitely right <laughs> like I agree. The next book that I read was The Loneliest Girl in the Universe by Lauren James. Again, this one was like hyped a couple years ago. Not really though. It was like a little bit of a hype and I got it because of that and then I never read it. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna finally read this. And I'm so glad that I did because beautiful. So this book is basically about Romy Silvers. She is the only surviving member of this space crew mission that she was literally born on. She didn't decide to go on this, she was born there and then her parents die and then she's alone on there. And it's kind of about her dealing with loneliness, coming to terms with that, finding her own strength, just navigating life all by herself and um, experiencing loss and grief and coming like overcoming it. And honestly, I love this so much, like especially during Corona times, I think this was so relevant. And how she, like Romy is such an inspiring character. Like she literally, she definitely makes my favorite literary character list. Like I love her so much. She's just the character growth that she goes through in this book and the sheer strength that this girl has is absolutely amazing. Like I cannot even fathom being in the same situation. And the way she deals with it is just really inspirational. And the ending was just fabulous. And it was so fast paced and it was just so much going on. And I honestly just, I loved it. I think even if you don't like science fiction, you will still enjoy this. And it's definitely not your typical YA. So check this out. The next book that I read was um, The Wrath, no, The Rose and the Dagger. <laughs> the second one in the Wrath and the Dawn a duology. Again, beautiful book from the outside. <laughs> it was also okay from the inside, don't worry. Um, so this is just like, follows the same storyline, so we'll not recap the summary. But um, yeah, this was a really slow one for me. <laughs> it took me like, I don't know, surprisingly long to read this. And um, I don't know, especially the first 200 pages, I really wasn't into it. I was almost like, oh, I don't know, maybe I'll just pick it up another time. <laughs> then I was like, no, 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 I'm going to be done with this duology and I just want to finish it. So I pulled through. The last 150 pages were really strong and made me cry and gasp. Like there were so many plot twists and I really enjoyed that bit. But um, yeah, the beginning did let me down quite a bit. And I'm not sure if it was my mindset and just the state of life I was in at that point or generally the book. So I think I would definitely still recommend the duology and I think it was a really fun wild ride. Um, the next book that I read is actually on my Kindle so yeah I don't have a physical copy but it was The Wallflower Wager by Tessa Dare and it is the third book in the Girl Meets Duke series. And this is basically a historical romance, he very, very heavy on the romance, not very heavy on the historical aspect. I would give trigger warnings for um, grooming and pedophilia for this one, but it is probably dealt with. It's not a trope within the book. It's one of the steamier romances, so also be aware of that. But I think the, the, the cover very much alludes to that. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. Um, definitely not my favorite in the series. The series kind of centers around these group, this group of women who all encounter love um, throughout the books. And yeah, that's pretty much it. They're all very similar, um, but I did enjoy it. I thought Penny was a bit of an annoying main character, not gonna lie. Like she had some growth throughout, which I enjoyed. But she is very, very naive, and sometimes I was just there like, oh, Penny, really? <laughs> but um, overall, I really enjoyed it, and it was just like a nice distraction from everything. So that's basically what romance is for me. It's just a nice escapism, you know? And just have give me some fluffy romance, and I'm happy. <laughs> so, yes. The next one that I read is The Beauty Myth. What a book! Okay, so <laughs> first of all, what this is about, it's basically about um, how the beauty myth has been utilized against women throughout the last 100 years is what its focus is on, but it goes obviously further back um, against women and to subjugate women and to control women kind of. And um, it talks about toxic diet culture, the porn industry, um, workplace discrimination, a lot of topics. Um, but yeah, I'll start with what I liked about the book. <laughs> I liked the toxic diet culture bits, um, that was quite interesting, though there should be a trigger warning for this for eating disorders. I liked the bits on the porn industry, thought that was quite interesting, and not much else to be honest, I don't know. The I think the biggest issue I had with this is it heavily focused on white women and middle class women. and literally did not even consider racialized beauty standards and I think that it was mentioned on like half a page once but if you're making a book about the beauty myth then you should be addressing the effects of racialized beauty standards like come on really like this should have been a whole section in this book and not just kind of mentioned in half a paragraph you know that's no <laughs> So I really, really hated that. And sometimes she would even compare women to slaves. She would compare women's situation to the Holocaust. She would compare women's situation to um, black people and completely marginalized all the women that actually went through the Holocaust, that actually experienced racism on a daily basis, that are actually black people as well. There are black women, you know, and she, yeah, so she just completely marginalizes all those people, which is a classic white feminist move. So not completely surprising, sadly. That was one of my biggest issues. Second issue was just, it was not very readable. <laughs> like it took me two weeks to read this book and it only has like 300 pages. And I just, every time I picked it up, I was like, I'm, hating this so much like the writing style was just not accessible at all and I just felt like there was so much information like just thrown at you but not in a coherent way and I just felt like the organization of the book like the red thread just wasn't there and she was jumping around and also the referencing was strange to me like sometimes she would very explicitly reference someone or something and then other times she'd just be like, oh, some scientists make this and this claim. And then it would be like a huge, like a very controversial, very, very um, bold claim. Like one of the things that she was saying, oh, some scientists say that women in 20 years will be replaced by robots. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, which scientists exactly say this? Because she said this 20 years ago. Okay, so yeah, quite interesting. Um, it's probably also a bit outdated because I feel like nowadays we'd really need a book on beauty standards and social media and how that is all correlated. But yeah, that that um, those are my thoughts. I made a post on my Instagram uh, as well. So if you want to check that out. But yeah, not a fan of this one. And now we're getting to my last book of the month, one that I actually really and really enjoyed, so I ended it on a high note. And that is The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison. Okay, so I love this book. Let's start with summary. Let's start with trigger warnings actually. This needs a trigger warning for sexual assault, violence, abuse, and um, 
pedophilia as well. So just be aware of that before going into this book. It's quite graphically described and if you're not okay with that, don't read this book basically. So this book centers around Picola and she is a 12 year old black girl, lives in Ohio. It's set in the 1940s, I think 1941 and just follows her and how racialized beauty standards really affect her but also the people around her. Her biggest dream is to have blue eyes and um, in the hopes that this will make her beautiful and make her be loved. It does not only follow her, it follows her friends, her family members and just members from outside and how they see her and their own past and presence and how they got to the stage in their lives. And it's just so beautifully done. Like there's so many layers to all the stories. And I just really, really loved how everything was kind of interwoven. Everything made so much sense. There was so much symbolism. The writing was beautiful. <laughs> Toni Morrison has a way with words. Like honestly, I was blown away. I loved it. And I haven't read a classic with this much depth in a while and it's really really short like 190 pages so how she managed to get all this depth and all this layering of characters into this book is just fascinating to me but if you're fine with these triggers please go and read this because this is a classic and this should be read yeah that is the last book of my uh january wrap up thank you so much for watching this if you made it this far like thanks <laughs> hope to see you soon in more videos that are to come hopefully and if you like this please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe and and thank you so much for watching <laughs>